And so I want to talk to you a little bit today about royalty. In fact, I put on this purple shirt today because I was praying. Some of you are like, wow, does that shirt have a dimmer switch? Anybody <laughs> thought that? <laughs> this isn't 70s day, by the way. I put this on, purple is a color of royalty. And I really believe that when you gave your life to Christ, that you were adopted into his family. And the Bible says that you were grafted in that you became a part of the royal lineage today. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. Probably about a month ago, I was pulling in on our Wednesday night and uh, getting ready to have our Wednesday night class. And while I was pulling into the parking lot, and it doesn't happen like this all the time, I got just a straight download from the Holy Spirit a, a message that I was supposed to release and that's the culmination of what's coming today. It was just a straight download. In fact, Lucas and Denise Basualdo, our children's uh, pastors and different, they also work in different ministries here. They pulled in the parking lot and they see me in the car and I'm just sitting there just being raw. And they're like, what is going on? And I was just like, man, I just got downloaded this message from the Lord and I wanna release it to you because I believe it's important for what God is doing in this hour. When you gave your life to Christ, you became royalty. In fact, I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, it's good to see you, your highness. Tell them. It's good to see you, your highness. How many of you that feels weird? You like, yeah. you know, in our day and age, especially if you've grown up in the church, most of you have been told all your life that you are worms. Oh, you're just a deadbeat. You don't have, ah, it's, you, we are just sinners saved by grace, and that is true. But do you realize that he took the crown of shame so that you could have the crown of glory? Did you realize that he became the curse so that you could be the blessing? And most people are living their lives saying, woe is me. And because of that, you have made it so you have no voice into the situations that come before you. And I'm here to tell you today that all of those difficulties that come before you are because you are royalty and you have the answer to overcome, not to be defeated. And so many people are living their lives, oh, woe is me. You, you don't know what's happened to me. Well, in Proverbs, it says something like this. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search out the answer to that thing. So what I'm trying to tell you today is there are things that God has hidden for you. That, that you're sitting there scratching your head like, oh, why am I facing these problems? It's because God has stirred something up in front of you that you would rise up and overcome and you'd begin to declare heaven's answer, the royal courts of heaven's declarations over what you are seeing that you would actually bring heaven to earth. And so many of us are frustrated in our Christian life because you're just like, oh, what's going on in my life today? And, and oh man, you don't understand what's happened to me. You don't understand what's happened to you. That you are a king and queen. That you are royalty. And you get to bring God's kingdom and advance his kingdom. A lot of people are like, I don't understand kingdom. Kingdom is king's dominion. You get to advance the king's dominion here on earth. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that subject today, that you are kings and queens. If you're following your notes, first of all, I want to talk to you about your royal pedigree. Your royal pedigree. A pedigree is a distinguished ancestry or lineage in order to be a king or a queen, you have to have the right bloodlines. And some of you are looking at your past and saying, Pastor, I don't feel like a king. I don't feel like royalty. In fact, I feel kind of worthless and useless. 
Well, the last time I checked, the Bible says, behold, you are now a new creation. The old is gone and the new has arrived. You have been born again, those of you who've put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so you have left the old life behind and you have stepped into a new royal identity. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters. So we hear that all the time in church. You are sons and daughters of God. But do you realize that you are a son and daughter of the king of kings? What does that make you? We hear from the pulpit that we are joint heirs. In fact, in Romans 8, 17, it says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. We are joint heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we also must share his suffering. This word heirs is a term that emphasizes our relationship to the Father. 1 Peter 1, 4, as his children, we have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven. This word heirs, those who receive their allotted possession by right or sonship. We are joint heirs with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So what is our inheritance? The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the When Christ returned and he died on a cross and was resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father, he said, it is finished. He reversed the curse. So if all have sinned and fallen short of the glory and God came in his son to reverse all of that, what has he returned to the church? His glory. His glory. What is Christ's inheritance? Hebrews 1.2 says the son has been appointed heir of all things. Being a co-heir with Christ means that as adopted children, we share the inheritance of Jesus. What belongs to Jesus now belongs to us. Christ gives us his glory, John 17.22. He gives us his riches, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. He gives us all things, Hebrews 1 and 2. We are welcome into God's family just as Jesus was accepted. We are accepted in the beloved. Hmm. That, be, that thought alone should change the way in which we operate and move in this world. I can no longer sit back and say, woe is me, because I got to stand and say, whoa, look at me. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.12 says, we will reign with him. Hmm. First Peter 2.9 says, you are God's chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's own possessions. We like to read that verse and be like, hey, we're all ministers unto God. But it says you are royal priests. Huh. When are we going to start believing what the word is saying? Revelation 1.6 says, if you read this in the New Living, and that's where I normally preach out of, it says, he has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. He has made us a kingdom of priests. But when I looked in the Greek, the better translation of the ancient language, you can find it in the King James Version, says, he hath made us kings and priests. Oh, pastor, I'm just out there trying to minister, but I don't know what to say and what to do. I'm just kind of walking through this. You don't know who you are. You are kings and priests. You have a royal pedigree. You are royalty, and that changes everything. Ephesians 2, 6, for he has raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him on the throne next to the Father. He has seated us with Christ in heavenly places because we are united with Jesus. 
We are seated in heavenly places. We are kings and queens. Huh. Royalty. If we truly are royalty, and we truly understand what we have been brought into, it will change our pursuits in this life. So we're talking about our pedigree changes our pursuits. The second thing I want to talk about in your notes, I want you to write in there is royal pursuits. Royal pursuits. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. I wonder what we are pursuing. Now I grew up in Canada and it's a commonwealth and so we do have a queen, the queen of England and some of you maybe have binge watched like me on Netflix, The Crown, and you're beginning to understand all of that. Well, the, those who are in royalty have way different pursuits than those who are common. The common person is trying to pursue all these things that they think they have. Someone who is in royalty realizes who they are, that they already have everything that they need, and so there's a whole different pursuit that's seen in their life. What are you pursuing? Money? Fame? Popularity, oh, if I just get this, then I'll be happy. Oh, if I can just have this breakthrough, then I'll be happy in life. Huh. What you pursue defines who you are. Some of you are pursuing what is already yours and what has already been given to you, and it proves that you don't know who you are and what you've been given. I want you to write in the royal power. Royal power. God gave you power and he wants you to use it. Philippians 4.13, for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I looked into the Greek, I looked up that word all and do you know what it means? All. Oh, I can only do some things. Oh, but pastor, you don't know the walls that I'm coming against, the obstacle. You can do all things through Christ. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. You have been given authority and power. He says, I've given you the keys. Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. I have clothed you with power. Walk in power. We're commanded in scripture to keep being filled with this power over and over and over again. Power, royal power. Ephesians 3.20, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Power. You have been given power. Oh, I feel so weak. I feel like I can't do it. I feel like I'm being crushed. I feel like you've been given power, clothed with power from on high, royal power. Secondly, you've been given royal pleasure. Oh, here goes that prosperity teaching again. Because we're not supposed to have any joy. Last time I checked, the scripture says the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've been given royal pleasure. God wants you to have pleasure. In fact, when he created Eden and Adam and Eve before the fall of mankind, there were pleasures like no other. God wants you to enjoy the fruit of the kingdom. Psalm 1611, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. 
Psalm 23, 6, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. His goodness, his love is pursuing me. Ah, I just need to stop and let them catch up. Psalm 37, 4, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full more abundantly. We've been given pleasure. Thirdly, we've been given provision. Royal provision. And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. I have a royal bank account that I tap into now, because it's according to his glorious riches that are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. These are promises. Provision. Isaiah 65, merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you wealth of many lands. Deuteronomy 8.18, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Jeremiah 29.11, we quote it all the time in here. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. He's provided for us. What are you pursuing? Power? It's already been given. Pleasure? Everything you're looking for is found in him. Seek first his kingdom. Everything else will be added. Provision? Oh, God, I just need a breakthrough. I will supply all that you need according to my glorious riches. You see, when we're pursuing all of these other things, it's just showing us that we don't realize who we are, whose we are, and what we have. Our pursuit reveals our royal identity. You don't see the royal family out there like, oh, I, I, I just don't have enough. So there's a royal problem. And this is where the Lord downloaded this message to me, right here. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 17. When Israel was supposed to, they were picking kings, and I don't believe that was God's original intention, but they were picking kings, and God said, well, when you pick your king, there's three things you've got to watch out for, because there's a royal problem. So in Deuteronomy 17, he says, the king must not build up a large stable of horses, for himself, or send his people to Egypt to buy horses, for the Lord has told you you must never return to Egypt. The king must not take many wives for himself, because this will turn his heart away from the Lord, and he must not accumulate large amounts of wealth in silver and gold for himself. See, God saw that the problem with us being royal is not that we would have stuff, but that our stuff would have us. And so we see in this portion of scripture, he says, the king must not build up a large stable of horses, which is power for himself. He says the king must not take many wives, because his heart will be turned. This is speaking of pleasures. He says the king must not accumulate large amounts of wealth in silver and gold. This is provision for himself. And I realized something that the Lord was speaking over us. In fact, the original title of this message was Beware Kings and Queens. Because so often as God has laid out so much for us, we end up pursuing things not for him, not for the advancement of the kingdom, but for the advancement of the king, little K, me. God, I want more power. God, I need, want more pleasure. I'm pursuing all of these things. God, I want more uh, provision. 
so that I can spend it on myself. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Don't be so self-absorbed. It says in the last days, 2 Timothy chapter 3, listen to this. In the last days, people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They they will consider nothing sacred. They'll be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. And I realized something, that when I became royalty, I received all power. I received all pleasure. I received all provision. That is already in my bank account. And if I spend my life trying to search for more power, more pleasure, more provision, so that I can spend it on myself, the the scripture guideline says, beware, king, you are disqualified from kingship. God is not against power. He wants you to have more power. God is not against pleasure. He wants you to come into the abundant life. God is not against provision. He says, from my bank account, I will supply all that you need. The problem is not the stuff. The problem is, what are your pursuits? Are you seeking the king and the king's dominion and what he wants you to accomplish on this earth? Are you being his ambassador? Are you being that king and that queen that he has called you to be? Or are you pursuing your own kingdom? Because what I read to you in 2 Timothy chapter 3 is all about people who are consumed with what they have and who they are and not worried about anybody else. And the Lord says that disqualifies you. You don't know who you are, whose you are, and what you have. And it's all revealed in your pursuits. So what should be our royal position? Well, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What is this verse saying? The verse is saying that we are working royalty That we are not royalty kings and queens so that others can come serve us to build our own kingdom. We are royalty in this hour. We are working royalty positioned to lift up others into what you have. Oh, I just come to church and I hope the pastor says something good today because it's all about me. Not meaning that there may be someone sitting in the back that God has a word for. Oh, I've heard this all before. Well, good for you. It's all about you. Oh, I just hope they sing my favorite song today. Oh, I hope that we get out early today because I got things. Oh, I hope that... Your identity is in what you are pursuing. We are working royalty. Matthew chapter 20, Jesus called them together and he said, you know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be the first among you must become your slave. God is calling us to be working royalty. See, I want more power. 
I want more gifts. I want to move in the prophetic in greater and greater measures, not so I can stand up front and say, oh, look at me. And so I can stand up in front and say, look at him. I'm not growing my kingdom. Oh, pastor, all you cared about on Easter was numbers. You are so wrong. If you even know me, I want great impact. I want people coming into the kingdom. It's not about me. It's not even about us. It's about him. I want more power, more power, God, so that I can step into those places of dysfunction and reach out and represent you well in this world, saying that you don't have to live broken. You can be whole because of what Jesus has done. I want more power. I want more pleasure. Because when I walk around like, whoa, it's me, I don't got nothing, I'm a worm, I'm useless, but you got to come and be like me. Yeah, people are like, oh, I want that. (laughs) I want people to know the joy of what it is to come into relationship with Jesus. I want people to know the, oh, when you come into the presence of the Lord, how your heart is just enraptured in his presence presence, this fullness of joy, that you've been wandering and pursuing and running after all these things in this world, and you can just stop and look into Jesus and find all that you need. And as I seek first his kingdom, everything else will be added. I want more provision. Does it mean that I'm not, never going to, I mean, there's times where Tanya and I are like scratching our heads, how are we going to pay that bill? But I can't afford myself to worry about something he's already provided. He said he's going to provide all of my needs. And when I'm stressing over something, it just proves that I don't know whose I am. I don't realize that my stress and my worry is an indicator that I don't know my father like I think I do. When the scripture says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When it says, I am faithful. When it says that I will supply all of your needs according to my glorious riches. Do you believe him? We spend so much of our time stressing and pursuing the wrong things and worrying about things that he has already said, I got it covered. I heard someone say one time, prayer becomes boring when you're asking for things that God has already given. But prayer becomes exciting and an adventure when you realize that it's all about me connecting to the heart of the Father and dragging my inheritance that's stored up for me in heaven, dragging it down from heaven to earth in this moment that I can partner with my dad and realize that there are great things that we are supposed to do here on this earth right here, right now. It comes out of that connection. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. I speak what I hear him speaking. He knew who he was. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the glory and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, our King, was exalted because he said, you know what? I am royalty, but I am working royalty. 
And there are too many of us who are like, we've become consumers in the kingdom. And that's what it says in the last days. They're going to get itchy ears running here and there, looking for whatever they can consume, whatever their itchy ears want to hear. I can go to YouTube. I can go Bethel TV. I can go here. I can go here. And again, I'm not against any of that. But your pursuit shows me whose you are. Are you serving and producing and advancing the kingdom or are you consuming and just saying, what is in it for me? And if we're not careful, we can become a church of just people who are like, oh, bless me, bless me, bless me. When God says, yes, I want to bless you and I have blessed you so that you can be a blessing. Revelation 4, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive all glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. When you gave your life to Christ, let's see if I can even get this thing out of here. I put it in here. (laughs) When you gave your life to Christ, you got a crown. And I think in the church, we walk around admiring crowns that those in heaven next to the throne take off and cast at the feet of Jesus because it's only because of what he has done in and through us. All glory, all power, all authority, all pleasure, all provision is yours and yours alone. Let my life be a living sacrifice, realizing that I am royal, realizing I am a king or queen, Realizing who I am and whose I am and what I have at my disposal. But let it be used for your glory. Because it's all about you and not me. Can I have everybody stand with me? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a minute as I land this thing. We have a royal problem. The king must not build up a large stable of horses, power for himself. The king must not take many wives for himself. The king must not accumulate large amounts of wealth and silver and gold for himself. I have been blessed to be a blessing. And God is calling his sons and daughters, the kings, the royalty, to go out into the world and let your light shine as royalty, not as paupers, as royalty, but to advance the kingdom, the king's dominion. It's not for you, it's for him. With heads bowed and eyes closed, God is speaking to his church in this hour because he wants us to find our voice. The point is, when we go to our friends who are struggling in a failed and broken marriage, you get to show up and say, I know the one who can turn every broken place, dead place in your life into life. The one who's struggling with lack, ah, I know how you can have access to the fullest bank account that does not end. To the one who feels weak and powerless, defeated and struggling to addictions and chains and and whatever's lacking in their life, ah, I know the one who is all-powerful, 
and he has made me an overcomer. Would you like to know more about that? I can't afford to spend these luxuries on myself. Know who you are. Know whose you are. And what you pursue reveals your identity.